Welcome back to Precalculus. Uh, we're going to talk about the dot product and just really uh, one application, really, uh, in, in two kind of different ways. So this should be brief, pretty brief and pretty straightforward compared to some of the other vector stuff we've done. So um, this is often called the third vector operation. So the first would be vector addition, scalar multiplication, and then this one comes in as a third. There's another one called the cross product we will not explore here. You'll see that in Calc 2, most likely. Also in physics, you might encounter the cross product, but we are not going to do that here. So let me show you what it means. Um, so if I want to dot a couple of vectors, for example, um, a vector u, let's say it has uh, components a, b, and a vector v that has components of c, d. Then to dot them, we just put a dot between them which you might wonder, how do we know it's not multiplication? Well, there's not really vector multiplication. There's scalar multiplication. But if you have two vectors in a multiplication relationship, um, it's a dot product, one less the cross product. So it's kind of two types of, multi of multiplication, I guess you could say. Um, but the dot means dot product. So you'll know by context. Well, what you do is you multiply the x components of the vector. You multiply the y components of the vector. And I messed that up, didn't I? Try it again. You multiply the x components of the two vectors, a and c. You multiply the y components of the vectors, b and d, and you add them together. So you're going to get what we call a scalar answer. But that right there is our definition of dot product. So let me show you a few examples. Um, so in these examples, we're going to let u be 3, 5. And we're going to let v be negative 2, 7. So if I were to dot these vectors, u dot v, I would be doing 3 times negative 2. Multiplication? Come on. Uh, 3 times negative 2 plus 5 times 7. In other words, Negative 6 plus 35, or 29. U dot V is 29. And so, like I say, we're going to do an application of this in a moment. Uh, example B, let's move it over here. Example B, what about V times V dot U? Hmm. So let's just leave V here for a minute, and let's dot V and U together. So we've already done U dot V. Let's see what V dot U is. Well, this would be negative 2 times 3 plus 7 times 5. And if you know about multiplication, you know it's not going to matter the order. This is going to be the same. It's going to be 29. So we have 29V. Well, now this is multiplying a vector by a scalar. Let's put 29 first. 29 times negative 2, 7. In other words, negative 58, 203. One thing I want you to, to point out here is A, the answer, was just a number. We call that a scalar. Number 2, B, the answer was a vector. So notice the distinction when you end up with scalars, when you have no, end up with vectors. If you have a, two vectors dotted, you're always going to get a scalar. If you have a third vector in the mix, it's going to become a vector. A fourth, it's back to a scalar. So, for example, let's not work this one out, but um, let me just ask this question. Would u dot v times v dot v be a vector or a scalar? Well, let's see. That's a scalar. That's a scalar. A scalar times a scalar is basically mathematics as you've known it up to this point. 7 times 3 is 21. Scalar times a scalar is a scalar. So this would be a scalar, right? Okay. So the number one application of the dot product that, well, the, I don't know if it's number one, but the one we're going to work on is finding the angle between vectors. Now we did that in 6.3, but we were given different information. 
we were given um, three magnitudes. Now, we're going to be able to find the angle between vectors given just their, comp um, just their uh, component forms. So you don't need to know anything about the resultant. And here it is. This is the formula you are going to want to know. Cosine of the angle theta, where theta is that angle between the vectors, equals to the dot product between the vectors divided by the product of their magnitudes. So um, theta is the angle between the vectors. It is that angle we speak of between the vectors. Okay? So let's do a couple of quick examples. I'm not going to spend a lot of time discussing these. Um, but let's say u is 8, 2, and v is negative, 12, negative 5, 12. So if I want to find the angle between them, we dot them. Not right. That looks right. We dot, we multiply the x's, you multiply the y's, and you divide it by the product of their magnitudes. Now you might know the magnitude of this v. It's a Pythagorean triple. It's 13, right? But let's say we didn't know it. So you could just plug that in. Um, as you do this, and I'll, I'll show you. Be careful, I'm gonna simplify the entire numerator. This becomes square root of 68. I don't really wanna write a decimal. This becomes 13. So you put that in your calculator. I personally do negative 16 divided by, um, and then parentheses, 13 square root of 68. You gotta make sure all of 13 and square root of 68 is in the parentheses. Um, so make sure you can do this and you get 98.58 degrees. So please practice that. Make sure you can get that answer. It's obtuse. Remember how a lot of cosines can find obtuse angles and distinguish them from, from acute, or a lot of sines cannot. Um, this one, I really debate either even doing this problem because it's almost the same, but I want to do one with IJK. Uh, so same idea, cosine of the angle is the dot product. Going to have a little bit nicer numbers this time. So it looks like cosine theta is at 8 over square root of 13 times square root of 5. And make sure you check this, you should get 7.13 degrees. So those two vectors, and if you look at the difference on these, they're both going right and down. They're both going to the fourth quadrant, so they're not that far apart. They're only 7.13 degrees apart. Whereas on A, these are going, U is going to the first quadrant, V is going to the second, so they're uh, 98 ish degrees apart. Uh, almost a right angle. And that's going to be our last topic, is right angles that are uh, perpendicular. You guys know the word perpendicular. Well, there's a fancy new word that our book likes to introduce here, and it is orthogonal. Maybe. You remember from geometry. It'd be awesome if you did. The prefix ortho means straight or direct. We talked about the ortho center of a triangle is the intersection of the perpendicular bisectors. Um, I'm sorry, it's the intersection of the altitudes. Um, we talk about orthodontist is looking to straighten your teeth, so ortho means straight or direct. Intersection of altitudes of the orthocenter. Intersection of perpendicular bisectors is the circumcenter. Um, and just, just for fun here, there is another word some books will use for perpendicular, a normal normal to a curve would be perpendicular to it so those three words are used in different contexts but they have similar meanings intersecting in a 90 degree angle so um, let's use the word for our book orthogonal that, that our book likes to use in this context if two vectors are orthogonal they are perpendicular 
or in other words, they intersect at a 90 degree angle. Uh, I'll say vectors, okay, whatever. Vectors intersect at a 90 degree angle. So if we think of our formula, here's an interesting thing, then what would be true of orthogonal vectors, perpendicular vectors? This would be true, right? Well, anything stand out to you about this? A well, cosine 90 degrees is zero. So when vectors are orthogonal, this fraction on the right equals zero. So tell me, when does a fraction equal zero? Some a over b, it equals zero when the numerator is zero. So the big takeaway here is if u and v are orthogonal, then u dot v equals zero. Wow, so orthogonal vectors have a dot product of zero because the only way you're gonna get zero over here is if the numerator is zero. The numerator is zero, the dot product is zero. So if they're orthogonal, the dot product is zero. If the dot product is zero, they're orthogonal. So lastly, the last example will be this. I'll just say, show that u and v, two vectors, are orthogonal. Um, and by the way, we're going to do it using the dot product. And we'll say that using the dot product. Okay, so we could say, let's say that u is 12, 4, v is negative 6, 18. Maybe you can tell just by looking at it. We'll talk about how we might be able to tell that. But notice by saying show that, I know it's true. So I'll just take the dot product of them. And I get negative 72 plus 72 equals 0. Check. There we go. So we could say u and v are orthogonal. since their dot product is zero. Or I guess I could have just said if u dot, since u dot v equals zero. But here's what I was saying you might have been able to tell before. So that it's pretty simple technique. Look at u. Can you tell it's going 12 over and four up? What is its slope? Four twelfths, right? Rise over run. We'll call that M U. What about V? V is going negative six up eighteen. What's its slope? Rise over run. This has a slope of one third. This has a slope of negative three. Now I'm not asking you to do this to do it the slope way. I'm just showing you that this is really not that big a big news. We've known this since pre-algebra that perpendicular lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals. And if vectors' slopes are negative reciprocals, then when you take the dot product, when you're multiplying the x's together and you're multiplying the y's together and you add them together, you're always going to get zero. So 